It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan Defaw. Before we get started, we want to help you save some money. That's right, folks. Uh, don't forget to use our promo codes to save that money. And let's start off with BuckBaits.com. That's right, the brick-and-mortar store of BuckBaits down at Sterling Heights, Michigan at 15 and Dodge Park. Go over there. If you're on the website, BuckBaits.com, use the promo code UNJ20. That will get you 20% off your order. For those of you who are looking for Easy Cut products, make sure you go to EasyCutProducts.com. And when you're there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ15 off to save 15% off you your order. And let's not forget Lincoln Roan over at Packermax.com. It's never too early, never too late to think about the Packermax. Go on over to Packermax.com, use the promo code UNJ25. That'll give you $25 off your order over at Packermax Outdoor. For those of you looking for some new firearms and firearm products, make sure you go over to the islandarmory.com. While you're there shopping, use the promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order there. If you shot that bird of a lifetime and you want it mounted, don't forget Troublesome Creek Taxidermy. We've had them live on the show. We've talked to them. Uh, You want to get 10% off your order, go to Facebook, go to troublesome.creek.7, find their website. If you go to our website, UNJ, make sure to click on the button to download the form. You get 10% off over there using the code UNJ10. Looking for that game call, whether it be a squirrel, whether it be goose, duck, deer, make sure you go to JPO Game Calls. Look for them at jpogamecalls.com. And while you're there shopping, use the UNJ10 promo code to save 10% off your order. And Miller Deer Tracking, the man that seems to never sleep during deer season, get 20% off your next deer tracking uh, using the promo code UNJ20. Look for Miller Deer Tracking on Facebook or give him a call over at 810-240-4891. Looking for the hottest new plastics to take on the water, whether it be hard water or soft water? Make sure you go over to southernindianabaitco.com. While there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order. Gear Camp Coffee, folks. We drink it every night on the show. You want to try it? You can go to the brick and mortar store at 15 and Dodge Park at Gear Camp itself or go to DeerCampCoffee.com. Also use our promo code UNJ10. You get 10% off your order. And don't forget, get a bag of the UNJ Medium Roast Blend there as well. All right, Danny. Where's our live view camera look from tonight? Welcome back. Another Wednesday live episode. Tonight's live look looking over Lake Michigan up in Empire, Michigan, uh, where it is 68 degrees, a bit cloudy, and uh, Mike actually kayaked through this area. Yes, I have. Man, the waters are looking mighty smooth right there. They were not as smooth as it was the day that Nancy and I were on the water up there, actually two days. We did Empire Bluffs one day. We did Sleeping Bear Dunes from the water another day. Right? And, Beautiful. And, of course, this is a live look, but the picture's frozen, of course, so <laughs> it must be getting cold up there, right? So, it's but, already freezing up there. <laughs> right, for sure. <laughs> hey, welcome back to another episode of Up North Journal, everybody. Host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFall. Not as hot in here as it was last week. You know, the last couple of days, I think, is the last bit, the last sputters of the heat. Yeah, I mean, we actually got the air rolling tonight. <laughs> yep, but after tonight, it's supposed to drop back into the 70s. The humid- 60s. Yep, humidity is supposed to go away, and uh, yeah, so... So it looks like we got a couple of new people in here watching tonight. So if you see the chat there, you join right in if you'd like. Post some questions, comments, whatever. Did you have a good Labor Day? Uh, I worked. Okay. that People got to do that. So well, I, I took the gravy. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, you know got to do what you got to do. Right? When, when the gravy bowl is put in front of you, you, you take a big heap and spoonful of it you know what i'm saying and i took i took a big heaping spoonful right exactly so. so you know uh it was a special day on monday for me yeah it was it was fabulous yeah yeah absolutely it, tri- it was it another trip around the sun for it you it was another trip around the sun the double nickels have, have hit me oh but it, it's all little, good little sammy hagar you can't drive 55 I, huh? I can't drive 55 that's for sure and uh and we want to extend uh, uh well wishes as well and happy birthday to the lovely miss tammy Dell. absolutely uh we had we share the same birthday and all are we still doing the month of danny oh yeah i it's just starting my friend all right 
It is just starting, my friend. So be prepared. Whatever I might be doing this month, I can attribute it to my birthday and Denise's birthday or Tammy's birthday. Whatever. So there's three okay. of us all on the hook. Actually, there's a fourth one we went to school with as well. So, But tonight's show is going to be action-packed. I got that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. we got some good stuff to talk about tonight. Absolutely. This is what happens when you have friends... Uh, you know, that reach out and just say, hey, I think I got a good subject for you. And I've actually been friends with Mr. Kevin Craven for a very long time. So it goes back to when 1982 this picture is, that, is from. Is that what that's? Oh, okay. That, that's from 1982. This is him up here in the, the right, right above my shoulder. I was his bat boy on his softball team that my my dad sponsored so okay. is that, I, where are you at i'm right here neil guy with the red hair glasses i look okay. like uh, i don't know what the heck i look like buster brown at times I guess. danny bonaducci right <laughs> so but uh yeah we've been friends for a long time so he reached out to me and said hey uh, he's now happily retired and uh he let us on to the, our guest tonight which is mr tim hasek who is part of the Northwest Michigan Fishing Club. Did I say that right? You said it right. You got it right. All right. Thanks for, hey, thanks for having me on. Hey, welcome to the show tonight, man. That's a long title. It is. I don't know where we came up with that, but it suited the area, so what the heck. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of fish in that area. There's a lot of water in that area. Uh, there's in the whole state of Michigan, so. Uh, yeah, we've had, a, we've had a good year, too. Wow. It's yeah. kind of winding down now, but... Uh, Wow, you know, what a season. Yeah, fall fall is upon us. I mean, it is yeah. knocking on the door as we speak. It, like I said, we were looking at that live picture coming out of Empire. You know, uh, the storms are coming across Lake Michigan today. You all got four inches of rain up there right here. Yeah, yeah, we did. It was terrible. It all came in about an hour and a half, too. That's not I'm good. Looking, I'm looking at my pond out back, and it's full, very full. Okay. Excellent. Big shout-out to Mike Radcliffe, first-time listener. Thanks for joining the show. Absolutely. And uh, Lauren Arthur Tiffany is I know both of them. Now, Mike is the president of the Northwest Michigan Fishing Club, so i got to be on my P's and Q's tonight. <laughs> you better be. <laughs> and Lauren is like one of our regular Wednesday night competitors. Okay. Uh -huh. She's all over. Good fisherman. All right. all right. So she's competitive type. So you better do good or else you might get replaced in the next interview. <laughs> well, I definitely will. <laughs> so, so the where North, are we going to start tonight? So let's and, find out a little bit of background about the Northwest Michigan Fishing Club in general. We have your Facebook page up as you're talking about uh, the club itself. How did it start? When did it form? Kind of give us the, the lowdown on, on where this all came about. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. It started in uh, really in 2019. We started taking official memberships. Uh you know, a yearly $20 for somebody to be part of the club. But it really started with a bunch of guys that routinely would be fishing together. And they wanted to have more input into the area, more entertainment opportunities, do more for the community. Everybody was kind of like, yeah, why don't we have a club? So we set it up. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of paperwork with the government, 501c3. And, um, yeah, we, we didn't get it the first time. So, so y'all are an official nonprofit club. Yes, yes. We have the stamp of approval. Okay, right on. So we have, uh, yeah, we've uh, you know gathered donations and done a ton of uh, community events and involving kids and veterans and really everyday fishermen. We kind of set it up to where it's like this is not a sport fishing association. Gotcha. Let's call it that. This is a everyday man's club. Okay. And. Even our tournaments, I call them tournaments, but they're really just fun events on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. um, they're set up for the guy that gets out of work at 5, and he can be there at 6 with a $10 bill in his pocket, and he can have a lot of fun okay. and bring a lot of people with him and his family. And, uh, you know, that gives kind of a break in the week for the working man, and that's what we wanted to, to do. So, you know, we do a lot of, uh, well, 17 Wednesday night events, and we do three three Saturday events, I think. Um, but of those, we split them right down the middle. So about eight of them are inland lakes. Okay. And I'm talking tiny inland lakes. And we rotate every week. We go somewhere else. We never hit the same spot twice uh, consecutively. 
So there we could, because that's where the hot bite is, but we don't do that. And then the other half is uh, big water events. So East, East Bay, West Bay, Leland, Frankfurt, all those areas, those are our big water events. So we have multiple, multiple locations on each of those locations. But, um, you know, so we kind of break it out to where it's, it's every man everywhere. And, you know, you're kind of encouraged to, you know, go do that little um, panfish lake in the middle of the woods, you know, or go do that harbor fishing for salmon or for lake trout. So it's giving you an opportunity to hit waters you might not normally right. hit. Right, it pushes the envelope of what your comfort zone is. Gotcha. So, and you know, if, if you're, you know, really curious about fishing and you just love fish, if you're like me, mm -hmm. just love to fish. I don't care if it's bluegill or ice fishing or salmon six miles offshore. I don't care what it is. I love to fish. And if that's how you're infected, because I'm infected, then that's, this club is for you because we go all over and we do everything. We even do trips down south. You know, we'll do convoys down to Saginaw um, where we can all, you know, kind of watch each other mm -hmm. and make sure the convoy is, uh, you know, <laughs> you don't want to have a breakdown and not have help. Oh, no kidding, especially if you're away yeah. from home, you know. Yeah, so we went to Mullet Lake and Saginaw. We to a few places, and, and uh, you know, it really, it really uh, you know, it's just kind of a family thing where the whole community, if you want to take advantage of it, it's here for you. You know, that's that's kind of the way we couch it as well. And last Thursday was your last Wednesday night tournament, correct? Yes. What a dud. Really? Because uh, we're, we're going, well, it doesn't look like a dud on this picture because this person is enjoying, it looks like a fresh a basket of peaches. But, you know, that, so one of our members shows up, he's a, uh, you know, a big orchard farmer uh, up here in Leelanau County, Greg Fredrickson and Carla, and they show up to a lot of our events and sometimes don't even fish. They just come to see the weigh-ins and, you know, it's a big social event and it gets them out of the house, but he shows up with these nice baskets full of peaches. And so we used them as raffle prizes. And then he actually sold a couple bushels, you know. So there was, a, you know, what a better way to go out with, a, you know, a fresh basket of peaches. And I didn't win one, but I did win another <laughs> raffle prize, and I traded it off for the basket of peaches because I, I didn't need the lures that I won, you know. Hey, man, you got to go home with snacks. You gotta, yeah, we, that, that last tournament, that was on the 30th of August, and that was uh, West Bay, right downtown Traverse City. You know, you're looking at all the buildings right out. You're, you're what, quarter mile, 200 meters maybe from all the shoreline of West Bay, Traverse City. And I think we had 18 boats, and I don't think three I, three fish were caught. That's it. Wow. Which is unheard of. Now, this is following, you know, three days of cold north wind, and the conditions just were terrible. I mean, it did calm down, but I think... Three salmon were caught. That was it. And you know, and you could catch you could catch lake trout too. That was in the you know in the winning bucket, but no one did. It was terrible. You know, they were small fish. It wasn't know. like the catch some twenty pound salmon. These were like little jack salmon that were you know dumb enough to bite. <laughs> you know, they're showing the the table of prizes that you had for that night, and there's four bushels of uh, peaches and, and beaver lures and some other things there. But uh, what time did it it start the tournament? Well, the tournament always started at 6 o'clock. Okay, so it always started yeah. at 6 o'clock. And yeah, every Wednesday night is 6 to, you know, 9.30. If, now, if we're doing a walleye event or a, a salmon event uh, where the fish are known to bite after dark or close to dark, then we'll go till 10. So it, it's adjustable, but we try to, you know, we make a schedule coming up. We'll, we'll start doing our schedule for 2024 in November. And we try to, you know, hit that glide path of when does dark hit when does dark you know when is it beneficial to still be out there fishing um you know and all our tournaments are like a lucky man tournament you don't have to put five walleye in a box and bring them into the weigh-in all it takes is one big fish and you could win big money and i'm talking a couple hundred dollars it's it's a fun wednesday night competition so yeah we kind of you know move that uh that uh, end time around from 9 30 10 o'clock uh usually give three and a half to four hours of fishing on oh, a wednesday night okay and, and we're, we're taking a look at the the board matter of fact and yes there's three fish listed on the board 
So I guess it was a very slow night. <laughs> Horrible. Well, right. Kevin was right, you know, we were trolling side by side the whole night. And he knew and I knew. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, you know, having these tournaments on Wednesday night, getting everybody involved and, and having them at a, at a great time after work when uh, if you're not retired, you can get out of work and head right down to the water up there, buy you up right. there. But you do other things as well. And, you know, one of the things uh, you guys do there is uh, you've installed lights at, at boat launches? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, this was an idea, oh, I don't know, a couple years ago that, uh, you know, we're just like we're running up on 10 o'clock at night and we're at a boat launch and it's pitch black in the parking lot and at the boat ramp. We're going, man, something has to happen here. So we got, you know, the DNR owns most of the boat launches up here. The townships own a few of them, but DNR owns the predominance of them. And there's a whole application process. You got to go through a business plan, had to write that. Um, how are we going to do it? Where are we going to do it? Approval processes and all this stuff. But it finally came to fruition last year. And uh, we put in, we, we generally do two lights per location. So one at a boat launch and one at uh, a parking lot. So yeah, we've hit uh, Silver Lake, uh, Lake Leelanau, uh, Hilltop Launch in West Bay, and Crystal Lake. Those are the four lakes that we've done over two years. And it takes about, you know, four hours to, you know, physically sync the post and get the lights on the post and our sign, we put a sign on, provided by the Northwest Michigan Fishing Club, you know, so we have a little presence there. People go, oh, nice. Great. Absolutely. Uh, we're yeah, so these are we're... solar lights, and I'll tell you, they were tested because Mike, our president, has had one in his yard for years, and he loves it. And it's maintenance-free. You know, we uh, we get the poles donated. They're old uh, oil field drilling poles, and Superior Inspection Service gives us those poles. They donate them. They're expensive if you have to buy them. Oh, nice. Um, and then Rev Auto applies this, uh, it's kind of like Rhino Liner. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's a very hard coating to eliminate any rust. They're not going to rust. And then we put the light on it and sink it in the ground. But all of that, you know, Mike really rounds up all the supplies, and he gets the donations because he knows a lot of people out there. And, um, yeah, and, you know, Consumers Energy gave us a $1,000 donation. And so did uh, the previous year, Terry Land Electric, because they like to dabble in this solar stuff. And they like the community outreach, too. And, uh, yeah, so we sink those poles in the ground, and we get great feedback on them. You know, thank God those lights were there. I almost ran over my fishing rod, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, and it's a fun event. You know, we had, I don't know, probably a dozen volunteers uh, this year. Greg Fredrickson, again, the guy that donated the peaches, he came out with his his little digger, I can't remember what the name of this thing is, but it's a, you know, it's just kind of a multi-service machine, dug the holes, you know, it, it takes quite an event to get the pole up, because they're heavy, and get it level and plumb, and we did all that, and I uh, just had it, you know, it's a great time, and Ron, Ron Rice, one of our members, he bought us all lunch afterwards, second year in a row, so I mean, it's, it's pretty fun, it's a good event, and you really feel good about doing it, because you're going to use it, and it's going to be there for years and years and years, and it's a benefit to the community. Even, you know, jet skiers come in after dark, um, other fishermen that are, aren't club members, all the uh, uh, pleasure boaters that come in late. You know, on the 4th of July, you come into a boat launch, and it doesn't have any lights, and there's 20 boats in front of you. Be nice to have a light down there. Absolutely. Right, exactly. And we're yep. as you're talking about them, we're running through the pictures that you had on August 18th. So yes, Wherever that yeah. one light was, two lights were put up, we're, we're rolling through those pictures as you talk about it. And you're right, that little machine that they're using kind of got around by carrying the pole, helping stand up the pole. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, that little guy yeah, was good. Out. Now, the, the year prior, we used a uh, pretty good-sized tractor with a front-end loader on it to do it. That worked, too. And uh, we had a you know post hole digger on the back of that tractor. That worked great, too. So, yeah, it's been, a, you know, next year we're going to do... Um, Braxton Bridge, we voted on this as a club, and I, I think the location is on the Betsy River, somewhere down around Thompsonville, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And then the other location is uh, Green Lake off of Betsy River Road. Two so, year, two a year? Two a year. Two, two a year. locations a year. Yeah. I can tell you, from a kayaker's point of view, 
I, I've come off of rivers later in the evening, and by the time we get loaded up and ready to try to get everything back to the vehicle or on the trailer, it's dark. Uh, a light at every boat launch would be invaluable. It, it's huge. 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 It's huge. Yes, we, we need to have Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And they're solar. You and know, the, that's awesome. Once you uh, get them up, there's no maintaining them. They're good to go. They're 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 solar powered and mike radcliffe says it's patriot lining and it's from rev auto that they that's put, it they that they put on there and you know it, that's one of the you know two lights solar powered maintenance free basically and away you go can't be yeah. that when you're we're getting like you said you have 20 boats out and it's all dark it kind of gets into a uh, fun time out there baxter bridge south of kingsley that's it baxter that's bridge. the one okay baxter bridge now, yes. you've talked about the club, some of the things you do, the tournaments that you run, uh, projects that you're involved with. So said person out there that's watching tonight, they're like, this is a good idea. I'd like to get involved in this. Um, you know, what's a membership cost? Uh, how do I get involved? Who do I get in touch with? Well, it's very expensive, okay? It's uh, $1.67 a month <laughs> or 20 bucks a year. There you go. And uh, you can do it on our website. Um, NorthwestMichiganFishingClub.com. There's a little membership tab. You click on that, fill out the form, hit the PayPal, and you'll be hearing from me. Because I'm the guy that sends the welcome emails, welcome packets. See, one of our board of directors will probably deliver a welcome packet to you. And uh, you'll get the full schedule of everything we do. And then you'll get email updates probably ah, once a week, once every other week. I'll send out a little, here's what's going on for the week type of email. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we'll get you involved. Okay. Love involvement. You don't even have to work. You don't have to be a volunteer. You can just come and watch, which a lot of people do. It's fun, and it's a great social event, and it's a great community uh, get-together, if you will. And we're looking at the website right now that you can go right there. There's the home button, the membership, uh, membership form. You click on that, go right to it, and you can fill out and join you guys for a mere $1.66. A month. 67. Oh, sorry. 67. The extra penny in there. Come right. on. You know. um, but <laughs> as we're looking at the website, you got to talk about the veterans Cisco in the Crisco. Yes. Uh, Cisco in the Crisco. Now, if you say it like the, um, remember the Flintstones cartoon on Saturday morning? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's Cisco in the Crisco. That's kind of the cadence I like right there. There you go. Anyway, this is a this is a big deal. It really it caps off the season. It's the 23rd of September, which is a Saturday. It's the last weekend before lake trout, and uh, well, lake trout season closes on the 30th of September. So it's the last really hoorah before you know lake trout are off limits until January. Um, and the reason we do that is because we want to have kind of a end capstone event for the season, and get veterans who have been following us or who just heard about us or who were told about us, get them out fishing. We don't like to just donate money and, you know, you know, here's to a veterans organ. We like to provide an opportunity for entertainment. And that's what this Cisco and the Crisco is. Not only entertainment, but a fresh fish lunch, right? When we come into the lodge, we do the weigh-in. We're cleaning up fish and we're frying them right there. It's fantastic. And uh, all these boats, these boat captains, some of them are professionals. Some of them are, you know, slugs like me. Um, but we fit, according to a veteran's disability or not, um, you know, his placement into boats. So he can get out there and we'll get him on the fish. You know, Cisco are just coming into the bay and they're hungry this time here. They move up shallow. There'll be a lot of them and lake trout. So, and you never know about salmon. They could still be out there on the 23rd. Been a weird year. So uh, I think we got 19 vets signed up right now. I think we may have room for a couple more. Mike will probably chime in on the chat and uh, see where we're at on boats versus veterans. You know, we do the pairing and kind of keep that updated um, as much as we can. Uh, we do like to have a few extra vets called the, on, the, on a B list in case one of the other vets says, hey, I can't make it fill my seat and then we'll have a, a reserve list we can go to and fill his seat nice but uh yeah I'll, there's a lot of captains coming out of uh, east bay that uh, will keep their boats in the water just for this event and, that's cool um you know it'll allow us to really 
you know, give back to the community. I got to tell you this story because we're always hunting around for a great location, you know, and uh, something that's um, going to be able to accommodate, you know, 20 boats mm -hmm. relatively. That's our goal. Um, so I call it Elk Rapids, and then I talk to the township uh, manager, and then she puts me into the uh, Elk Rapids Marina Harbor Master. And I tell her what we want to do, you know, the whole plan and, and uh, how we want to cook out afterwards and can we use her pavilion. And she's like, yep, it sounds great. The 23rd is open. Let's reserve it. And I'm like, okay, well, let's talk money because, you know, it's like a $250 deposit and $100 an hour to use the pavilion. Great facility. I mean, it's got to be the best harbor on the lake. Anyway, she goes, oh, no, no, we're going to waive all that. This is a veterans event. I mean, you can't do that. Five hundred bucks right there. Exactly. Yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike says that you're shooting for twenty to twenty-five vets in total. There we go. There we go. Yep. And we're almost there. You know, surprisingly, you would you would be surprised how tough it is to get veterans out. Some of them just don't want to go. Some of them just don't have the trust that they're gonna, you know, have the accommodations um, that they're gonna be comfortable. Right. Um, safe. Right. Sure, a lot of that. And, man, I'll, I'll tell you, we've done quite a few of these events. Never had an issue. It's always been a great event. And the raffle prizes that come with it will make it worth their while to come out and, uh, you know, play. Do you have, come out and play. It's about it. Do you have you know? uh, boats that would accommodate somebody that needs to be uh, barrier-free for a vet? Well, within, within, within we reason. have, you know, the big charter boats that have bathrooms on board. Gotcha. Um, they have a big dance floor in the back, so I will say yes. Yeah. Now, if we have to launch or load somebody into a boat and out of a boat, it may, you know, yep. that's a disability that we're wrestling with. Gotcha. Uh, we've had club briefings from companies to come in and show us how to do um, hoists okay. off a dock with a wheelchair and hoist a guy in a wheelchair onto a boat. Gotcha. So we've gone to that length. We haven't done that yet. But you're prepared uh, but for it. Uh, we we have uh, heard of the plans to okay. do it. Yes. Okay. And there's, there's many ways to do it, but there's a co couple companies that really specialize in, you know, getting uh, dis disabled people in and off boats safely. Question coming in over the chat is: We talked about your Wednesday night fishing tournaments uh, with the kids, with everybody. Uh, this tournament coming up. Do you have a safety meeting prior to every tournament that you have? No, no safety meeting. This is all. Uh, you know, personal responsibility. Uh, we do make a weather call by noon on Wednesday if it's uh, going to get blown out or light, either one. Um, and we really only had three uh, weather calls this year out of 17, so not bad. But the, uh, you know, the, uh, the registration is really where you'd want to ask any safety type questions. And we open up registration an hour to an hour and a half before six o'clock lines in. So you have plenty of time to decide, are you going to do it or are you not going to do it? And uh, I think there's been a couple where we could have called and said, no, let's not do it. I mean, we kind of pushed the envelope on a couple of them, knowing that the wind would calm down. Mm -hmm. West Bay on the 30th of August was, was one of those. Uh, just, you know, we got two foot rollers, some white caps, but the weather forecast was winds are going to decline to calm by 10 o'clock. Well, that's a steep drop off from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So we went ahead with it um, and it did calm down. Um, but I can remember a Frankfurt event last year where I'm busting waves going out of the harbor and there's a 16 footer behind me that's really splashing a lot of water back there. So I didn't run away. I just stayed right in front of him to see if he was going to follow me out. But that one was a rough one. And it, it calmed down, but not where you'd want it you know what i mean you still probably got one footers no white caps but uh those big water events we we watched pretty careful now lake leland which is technically a small lake uh that got blown out this year um just too rough <laughs> it's not going to be fun so yeah we cancel them but no safety me so you know speaking of the events that you have on uh uh for the Wednesday tournaments. Uh, do you have a lot of kids that come out for those events as well, or do you have specific events for the kids? Uh, well, both, yes. A lot of uh, a lot of kids come with their parents or with their, their uh, you know, neighbor, or uncle, uh, whatever, on Wednesday nights. And we keep track of them. We usually get about 
anywhere from two to six, depending on the size of the event and uh, what's going on. So kids under 16 are free. Um, but the kids' events, I mean, we do five kids' events a year. Let me get my glasses on for this one. Six kids' events a year. And a couple, let's see, three of those are the kids' mobile fishing pond. I don't know if you guys ever heard of this. It was new to me years ago. Now it's old hat. But um, we take a, it all starts out in April when uh, the Kalkaska has their trout fest. And we set up our mobile kids' fishing pond in the fire station in Kalkaska. Mm -hmm. And all of the prizes, we, do, we try to do a prize per kid. So a fishing pole combo, a tackle box, something, T-shirt, uh, something for the kid. Uh, but we had 340-some-odd kids come through there this year on a two-day event with 260 trout. And, uh, you know, just a huge... Uh, introduction, you know, because these kids are just enamored with rainbow trout, and you know they it's like a uh, what ten by twelve, uh, two and a half foot pond, but it's got a black liner in it, so you can't really see the trout in there. And we keep the oxygenators going on the top, squirting the top surface of the water, so you can't really see the fish. So, you know, you got to be on your game or have a helper with you. And mom and dad usually <laughs> help uh, or relative, whatever neighbor there's we like a going lot to of kids one. through there and i'm telling you <laughs> we see them every year they come back it's fun and it's for like you know anybody from like four or five years old all the way up to say 10 11 um and it's really because there was a a niche there because they do have a trout pond during the trout festival that kids go to fish but that's for kind of the older kids that can cast you know and right. uh can bait their own hook this is not that we use ice fishing poles we bait their hook, we net the fish for them, we bag the fish up on ice and send them with a nice prize out the door, free of charge. There you go. And uh, we do that, in, that starts in Kalkaska in April. Our next one's coming up in October. We go to Fox Ford, set it right up in their showroom in Cadillac. And that's a hoot because it's the kids we never see. You know, we haven't seen them in Kalkaska. You know, we've been doing it for a couple of years there. We see the kids, the one in Cadillac, these are all fresh faces, and they're squealing, and they're having a ball, and their moms and dads are having a ball, and every, it's a lot of fun. And then uh, we actually got invited to go down to the uh, Sierra Club uh, International uh, Outdoor Show in Flint, and we set it up down there. And, you know, we had one night in, in uh, Flint, and it's a big show. I mean, there's, you know multi-million dollar hunting organizations all the fishing guides are down there it's a big deal you were there this I last think we year were the star of the show i think that that trout pond just attracted everybody over there you, you know you were fun. there this this past year yep okay are you coming back this year don't if they invite us yeah okay well that, <laughs> yeah. Keep us well said, yeah that's in our back door good yes that's right you know it's funny we had I, you know another good story we filled that pond up the fire department comes and, uh, you know, they help us out. They get the fresh water out of the creek or a lake because you can't put chlorinated water in a trout pond. Right. So they dump, they fill it up, and I'm like, hey, Mike, we got a leak. <laughs> <laughs> Our liner was leaking. And we had, like, you know, we had the next morning, we had to go live. And uh, Mike came up with this brainstorm idea to take a tarp and run it under the water, under the fish, all up the other side of that trout pond and then wrap it tight with bungee cords so that we kind of formed our own little pond liner on top of the liner. Okay. It saved the day. I mean, we, we what's that stuff, the, uh, the the black stuff that you use to patch a leak? It's always on the info commercial. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Like Flex Seal? Flex Seal, yeah. We're going to Flex Seal it. <laughs> that would have never worked. Uh. Was that Mike Dickerson by by chance? Yes, it is. I know yeah. Mike. I I know him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that was that was fantastic. We we enjoyed that, that show. That sounds like something he would come up with. So so by the numbers, there was th uh, three hundred twenty six kids last year in twenty twenty two. Three hundred sixty seven kids in twenty twenty three in two days under the age of ten. There you go. Uh, October. Let's see. October seventh will be at Fox Ford, like you said. SCI yeah. in March. Yes, at SCI in Flint. Okay, so, so we're going to have to yeah. make sure we get get to that event. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know. 
it's 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 a great event. But, yeah, you know, kids events. Event. If you can hook a kid fishing, uh, you know, just in something as simple as that, uh, you're going to get them for life. Absolutely. You know, so that that's our three you know mobile fishing pond uh, events, and there'll probably be more. You know, we're looking for one in Traverse City to keep it local. You know, so we don't have to go to Flint. That was quite a. That's a haul. It was quite a circus to get it all down there. Yeah. Um, but we do, you know, an actual kids fishing day on Lake Dubonnet. Yes, I, mean, uh, I love that lake. That... Yeah, and you know, Dubonnet you, used to be called Mud Lake. Now it's Dubonnet. I mean, it's just full of panfish, pike, and bass. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep a kid busy, and he doesn't have to be in a boat. Now we took out forty some odd kids, some in boats, some on the shoreline. Had a big weigh-in, weighing in all their, uh, you know, bluegill and perch and bat. Well, we didn't keep bass. We kept pike. Um, had the DNR officer out there, and it was funny because, you know, Dubonnet's a uh, five pike limit, I believe. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, take them all. There's plenty. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. We had a nice cookout and gave away a bunch of raffle prizes and uh, really hooked the kids because that's actual fishing. You know, that's worm and bobber and... and Get after, after it. Some, after. some guys troll the yeah. pike. And uh, I think we had 40 kids on that one, and it was it was a great day. At the same time, the same day, Mike had a crew of volunteers at the Discovery Pier. I don't know if you guys are aware of this uh, big organization, but Discovery Pier is kind of a uh, township slash community uh, facility, if you will. It's a big pier in uh, West Bay in Traverse City, and it has the big schooner uh big old schooner there mm -hmm. for uh, sightseeing, but Discovery Pier wanted us to come in there and do a, a bunch of classes for the kids, and then the kids would actually take what they learned in our classes, not tying and casting, and then go out to the end of the pier and catch fish. So that was the same day as Dubonnet, so while we're doing 40 kids up there at Dubonnet and getting them on fish, uh, another glut of our volunteers were down on Discovery Pier getting those kids spun off on not tying and casting and then getting them out on the piers as well. Yeah. So we're trying to get that next generation of fishermen excited. And it's a good time, you know, it's a good time to do it because there's a lot of fish to be had. Absolutely. You know, and, and speaking of the next generation, there's a, a switching gears will say going from what all good you've done with with uh, the tournaments on Wednesdays the, the items with the kids the upcoming uh, with the veterans uh, uh, something happened in Michigan last week that's kind of not making the headlines like it we think it should or uh, it's not getting enough attention it's just kind of happening and if you don't if you're not in the circle which uh, not a lot of people are well uh, he just talked about we've got a lot of fish now well, for getting, our kids. Getting our kids involved and bringing up the next generation. But something happened last week in Michigan where uh, the decree was, explain what happened. Well, for the last two years, yeah, two years, the Coalition to Protect Michigan Resources, which is nothing but a grouping of all the clubs in the state, fishing clubs, from Charter Michigan Charter Boat Association all the way down to the Northwest Michigan Fishing Club. I mean, there's a bunch of clubs from around the state um, that we're really just a coalition to represent recreational fishing and sport fishing as well. You know, the charter boat industry has a big say in this, big stake in it, I should say, not a say. Um, but yeah, so this uh, federal uh, treaty from the year 1836 was uh, has been you know hanging around for 200 years now and it's gone through several iterations of this thing called a consent decree and a consent decree is where every, all the parties consent to play by a certain set of rules and it started in 1980 and uh, uh, 1980 was kind of the pivotal year because the lakes were broke up into zones and in those zones, the tribes were designated what areas the Sioux tribe fishes up north. Little Travers Band gets Petoskey, Charlevoix. Grand Travers Band gets the bays. Little River Band gets Manistee, etc. There's five tribes. Um, so that happened, and it didn't work in 1980. From and it's a 20-year agreement, by the way. So from 1980 to 2000, 
the uh, the fishery, the Great Lakes, were basically gutted of lake trout and whitefish. And overfishing, uh, quagga mussels, all of what you want, no more lake trout, no more whitefish. So in 2000, the coalition, who represents fishermen, um, really was successful and teamed up with the DNR, Michigan DNR, to negotiate between the feds and the tribes, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So in 2000, it was a, you know, a good year for the fishery because the judge, a federal judge at the time, said, um, we're going to buy you out of gill nets because there's very few countries left in the world that still allow gill net fish. We're going to buy you out of gill nets, but we're going to maintain your right to fish with trap nets. And here's $14 million to do it. So the tribes uh, converted from gill net fishing to trap net fishing, and that worked. The fishery came back. The lake trout restoration program was, you know, seeing results on all the reefs that they're planting offshore and inshore lake trout. Um, the salmon fishery came back. The bait came back. Um, white fish are still down, you know, not seeing a whole lot of numbers on those, but there's no restoration program on Salmon were good. Uh, so from 2000 until 2020, that decree worked pretty well. Now, negotiations restarted in 2018, 2019 for the 2020 decree. Now we're right up to where we're at right now. And the DNR did a complete flip-flop. They, instead of representing the fishermen of the state, they sided with the tribes and with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So I call them Team Gillnets against the little coalition, us guys. So it's us against the state, the feds, and the tribes. And you know what the outcome is. Gillnets galore. <laughs> That's what I call it. What, what was the, um, the, uh, the impetus of flipping from, from not having him to going back to him? Well, that's a good question. You would have to ask the DNR. Okay. What changed? I don't think they have an answer. Okay. Um, anyway, now we are at the implementation phase of the consent decree. And that is uh, the judge is going to sign the order that allows the gill nets to go in. Now, when does that happen? Well, there's one tribe, the Sioux tribe disagrees. They don't want any part of the consent decree. The judge signed it anyway and said, too bad, so sad. You signed it in 1836. You're in. It will be enforced. Um, when does the implementation order get signed? I don't know. Let's say it's a week from now. All right. Let's say it's mid-September. Just in time for lake trout spawning season in the shallows and Cisco. They're an they're autumn, a fall season uh, spawner. So, you know, in, it's, it's going to be brutal. I'm telling you, we got, now we got small mesh gill nets coming in too. Not just large mesh. We got small mesh, um, you know, untold miles for commercial fishing. But the real killer is the subsistence guys that are allowed to put 300 feet anywhere they want. Now, there's boundaries. It can't be 100 feet uh, next to a mouth of a river, a tributary, et cetera, et cetera. But there's no enforcement, zero. And if, if somebody gets a ticket, it's a $100 ticket because the tribes are going to mirror what the penalties are for commercial fishing non-tribal, which, the, you know, those rules haven't changed forever. So it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, watch your lower units. Watch your downrigger balls. You never know when you're going to run over one of these things. And, uh, you know, woe be unto the fishery. I mean, in 1979, that was the whole impetus to go uh, to do something about the consent decree because the, the East and West Bay were gutted of lake trout in a matter of days. In a matter of a summer, it, it was empty of lake trout. Lachino Islands, Big Bay to Knock, Little Bay to Knock of Walleye, gone, decimated. Well, for, Here's all the fish. For, for people who don't maybe listening that don't understand how how these work or what they do um uh, get a, a little bit in insight into how they work well, and, and they kill it's everything a big, yeah it's a big net um that is vertical in the water it's weighted at the bottom and has floats at the top and anything that swims into it is caught uh so you know the dnr says well you know they're not going to target salmon and they're not going to catch all the steelhead and, uh, you know, bass. They won't catch bass. Well, how do we know that? How, how, can, you, how, can, you, how can you say that? Um, 
it's like putting up a deer crossing sign on a highway and making sure all the deer cross within that hundred feet of that sign just so you know the rest of the road is okay right uh, how, yeah, how, it's... how do you how can the dnr scientifically say that if i put this net here it's not going to it's only going to catch x fish you know the, the reasonable man would say they can't do it but the dnr says it can be done so we're supposed to believe uh, that okay okay so let's go with it they're out there fishing, catching their gill nets. What percentage of those fish they're targeting, they keep, but everything that is caught in a gill net will die? Yeah, yeah, it's indiscriminate. So it doesn't matter. You pull up, you're you're out there, and you're, you're going after whatever fish. I'm just gonna say a a lake trout, but you pull up uh, a salmon. Okay. In the end, sure. they're both gonna die. That's right. That's so, right. And I, I, I think, you know, if you if you look at the markets, where do you see lake trout selling really heavy? You know, Macaw City, St. Agnes, they do a nice smoked fish, you know, walk-in retail operation up there. But I think the real markets are the pet food industry and the eco-fertilizer plant in Peshabi Town. I think those are two markets that are really overlooked. And the contracts are overlooked and it's many many pounds of fish oh well, for sure and, 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 and just that you're thinking that you're saying the dnr is telling people is kind of throwing that big red flag up that don't worry it's not going to kill these fish it's going to kill those fish right well the dnr has a safety valve in place and it's brand new and it's only like of the 21 million that come that comes with this consent decree it's only like four million dollars of it but it's an electronic reporting system it's going to save everything it's going to save the fishery because the tribes are going to report and the dnr is going to manage and they're going to be able to say pull that net you're over your limit your total uh your tac total allowable catch they call it um yeah that's going to work huh that's interesting. I, 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 right? How, yeah. how, yeah, it's something else. I'll I tell can, you what. It's, I can understand the DNR. We have our new system in place for, for deer. Deer. You know, you, you go in, you, you do it, and you literally can get up to date information. But that is only as good as the people reporting it. Correct. That's and right. we, we've talked to Chad Stewart of the DNR, and they've had where, you know, where you put your drop your little pin where you got your deer. They've had several fro floating out in the big lakes. <laughs> you know, so I, right. you know, to tell me that they're going to, unless, and I don't know how this will happen or this will work, but unless they're heavily regulated and watched when they come. I, I don't know. I really I have a hard time believing that. Yeah, there's no, you know, I thought, you know, um, observers on boats, um, way stations, you know, some of this should have been set up to where the tribes bring in their catch. They weigh it. Okay, off you go. You know, we'll let you know when you're at your limit. But there's none of that. I mean, none of the concessions that the recreational fishermen offered up as a negotiating thing, none of them were accepted. No there was no negotiation. The recreational fishermen didn't get in. We asked for, lo and behold, lights, or maybe a marker that really sticks up that you can see at night on a gill net coming out of Manistee. <laughs> well, oh, that, no. that's what no, Kevin, no, we Kevin can't said. Have that. There will be little to no marking showing where these nets are. And you mentioned it just prior. Your downriggers and whatnot, you run them over and you're going to catch a gill net. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's yeah. gonna and that's gonna just <laughs> literally that'll probably rip those off your boat if you don't pay attention, yes. right? Right. If not the transom and a sinking boat. Well let's it's... not go there because well, unfortunately if it does happen, I hope that it gets pointed in the right direction because usually what happens nowadays is uh, so said boater does that, then they blame the boater. Yep. But well it was your fault. Pick a reason. Wait. I, I ran over this that I didn't know was there. Well, it's still your fault. 
You should have known. Right. You know, yeah. you know how you know how that's going to work. But well, you didn't you didn't see the half full milk jug, which is the marker. <laughs> that too, right? So if <laughs> as we talk about this, if anybody wants to learn more information uh, or or do anything or go read about it, help. Uh, is there a website they can go to? Yes, there is. The Coalition to Protect Michigan Resources is the go to agency. It's the only voice the fishermen have. It, that's it. It's them. And you, and, go, and you go to protectmiresources.com. That's right. And there's a GoFundMe down there. Now, we're, we're paying lawyers. All the clubs that are part of this coalition, we pay, and that money goes directly to the lawyers because the lawyers are basically working for cut rates, and they're funding their own travel, Cincinnati, Lansing, Grand Rapids, you name it. They're out on the road. And they're coordinating with the tribes as well. They go to the Sioux and talk to the, you know, the uh, netting leaders up there. And, you know, technically, the tribes and the coalition guys get along pretty well. There hasn't been any ugliness. It's with the DNR. How the DNR came up with this idea to support the feds and the tribes versus the fishermen of the state, I don't know. It's like, let's cut the hand off that feeds you. Right. We're the, we're the, the guys that pay for everything. Exactly. Well, since this is a federal treaty that they're – manipulating and we're dealing with it here in michigan are there any other great late states that are seeing the same thing or what about canada i mean international border it, it, they share some of the same waters that we do is there well it's a good question but it's one that i don't know okay because i've just focused on you know what's happening in the michigan waters and you know i know wisconsin touches uh, 1836 waters mm -hmm. and i know um lake ontario is going to deal with it. it their treaties coming up you know, now that the foot's in the door, of course, this is all, you know, hyperbole and prediction. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Saginaw is under a treaty right now. I think, And it was years before the 1836 treaty. It was like the 1819 treaty. Now, could you imagine if uh, the, the Chippewa tribe down there said, hey, we want our fishing rights back in Saginaw Bay for gill nets? <laughs> oh, oh, man. You have a lot more clubs joining the coalition. I'll tell you that. Well, that that that's part of it. And, and I did find an article that was done over in Wisconsin that they kind of touched on it. That uh, hey, uh, Wisconsin, you know, just so you know, they're they're pushing for something else about a, a study for fisheries. But hey, guess what happened over in Michigan? So they kept, they're, right. they're definitely aware of uh, aware of it. It's on uh, the radar. It's on the radar. How far it's getting, we probably don't know. But, uh, you know, the only way to, to, to get out there is have uh, a voice and get that word out there. And like you said, uh, whether it be Traverse City, we'll even bring up what you just said, um, uh, Saginaw Bay. You destroy these fisheries, all those boats that charter will be done. Tourism dollars. Tourism dollars to go out on those boats. People pay to right. go stay in the motels, hotels. The gas they burn getting there and back will be the food, gone. The food that's bought right. here in the area. Well, I'll tell you what else it affects. I mean, we, well, the DNR stocked 660,000 fish in our area in northwest Michigan last year from March until June. Here's my cat. <laughs> um, so, our, you know, our club, we go out on these stockings and we keep the birds off the stocking, off the stock fish. So, kayakers, boaters, what have you, we go out there and protect the, the, uh, the smolts or the fingerlings or whatever they're planting, make sure the birds stay off them, seagulls, cormorants, you name it. There's, uh, there's fish ducks out there that are, you know, having a heyday. <laughs> right? It's, and, a, it's uh, a free menu. Yeah. If, you know, how does the gillnets affect our aviation predator control? That's what we call it, APC, you know, and do we put effort into that? knowing that these fish are going to end up in a gillnet. I mean, there's a lot of impact, a lot of implications to it, not just the businesses in the area. They have to be freaking out. Right. I totally agree with you on that, and I think the 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 surmise that the gillnets will be selective on what they take is kind of I, I, well, a pie-in-the-sky thought. Let's take this yeah. a step further. So, okay, you're talking about stocking thousands and thousands and thousands of fingerlings or fry whatever you're putting in the water who pays for those that is all fishing license revenue and we're putting them in to be 
gill netted and we're supplying that food chain for for the gill nets yep that's right out of our license fee okay that's right yeah no hey yeah i feel better now yeah i know yeah well it, rest assured the new dnr director just got appointed yesterday that's right yep he's gonna i'm sure he's got this on his radar his calendar to address <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I did not hear about that, but I can tell from the chuckle in your voice. I, I, I probably... Oh, well, he was appointed by the governor, and he's got a uh, bachelor's degree in liberal arts uh, slash history. Uh, so I'm sure he spun up on the 1836 year mm -hmm. of what all happened when Michigan, you know, barely was a state and did this. You know, on on the uh, the deer side or the the mammal side, the land animals we run into this all the time. Why do we continually put people in charge of things that don't have any outdoor background or experience? I don't know. You know, some people have you want you to believe that if they don't know anything, they're better than somebody that's got biases, you know? Mm. Um, don't get boy, it. Boy, it's a steep learning curve. Same I'll tell with, you what. Same with the NRC. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's something else. I don't, I don't get it. Um, but let me let me get back to, you know, how the club impacts the fishing around here, because we, you know, we can dabble with the coalition. We're, we're just David versus Goliath out here. You know what I mean? Right. But in some respects, we have a voice in the stockings. And if we don't continue to be loud and obtuse at these uh, uh, citizens fishery advisory committees, our stockings will get pulled south out of the 1836 waters mm -hmm. because the question is, why are we stocking fish for gill nets? Right. Why don't we stock them in Muskegon mm -hmm. or New, New Buffalo? Right. You know, put them down on the south end. Right. And so <laughs> there's another implication. You know, we got to be loud and proud down there in uh, Clare. We do it twice a year. It's coming up September sometime this month. Um, and make sure, or do we? Make sure our stockings stay. I mean, the brown trout, you know, we were over 100,000 brown trout just in uh, Benzie and Leelanau County alone last year. But I'll tell you, there's organizations downstate that will gladly take those brown trout stockings. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? If that's the case, then get them down there because, you know, the and however that's going to work. But I just did a quick little uh, search and found out he was previously a lottery commissioner. That's right. Uh, and he's perfect. And he, that would have been my choice. Right? Office of the State Employer. And he was on the Grand Rapids City Commission. So it sounds like he's got the perfect fit <laughs> to manage. Oh, it's just another slap in the face, I'll tell you. It right? really is. But yeah. you know what? I, I, I hope the word gets out. I hope things change. I hope the, the common sense comes into play. I don't yes. understand why needing to go back to the gill net part. Just keep them where they're at today. Unless this is a whole, uh, if you follow the money, it's where it's going to end up. That it, it, what did you say they paid them in, in 2014? Uh, 14 million. 14 million. Okay, so now we're here 2023. What's the number going to be? Just 21 million. million. It's okay. in the decree. Then, it's a $21 but, million, dollar, uh, you know. But they, could, but they still can use the gill nets. Oh, yeah. No, so if we're going to pay you $21 million, then you don't use the gill nets. There's a, you know. And who, who's paying the money? That's a good question. I don't know if it's a federal check that's going to be written or a state check that's going to be written. Uh, don't know. I hate to, hate to guess on that one. Yeah, I don't even want to think about it. And I won't even no. say that, you know, this guy contributed $64,000 to the governor's election fund. But oh, yeah, he did. Kevin did. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. You're right. It, it's pay to play, right? And, yep. and that's where we're at today. So by having you on, we're getting the word out. And by all means, share this show. Get it out so we can get you more people. Hopefully things change. Uh, but we're running up uh, past an hour. So with that being said, if you don't have any other questions. I got a lot of questions. Well, I know, but we got, you know, we, <laughs> kind of, we don't have all night. We could talk about a month. So. Right. But <laughs> what we like to do towards the end of the show we like to ask our new interviewees uh, some fun questions. You know, we talk okay. about the kids' day, what you guys do. 
we got into the, the politics of wonderful yield netting that Mike's going to help pay for. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> right? So, but, uh, you know, you're retired. You're doing a lot of traveling and fishing up in that area. One of the questions we always ask is, what are you listening to on the radio? Oh, that's a good question. I like uh, everything. But I'll tell you, if there's a Morgan Wallen song on, I'll leave it on. There you go. I won't turn that off. Isn't that the um, guy that shaved his mullet? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of my country dip there. I do like rock and roll, though, and I like the new stuff, too. Okay. There's a lot of good rock and roll out there. You know, you can't turn on a radio station out here in Greta Van Fleet out of Frankenmuth. No. Right down the road Fantastic. from me. That's literally they, ten miles down the road. Right? They, they <laughs> yeah. are they're pretty good. There's a good, yeah. there's a good story yeah, about how the, they got there where they are. are. You know they're the representatives of Frankenmuth now in a in a you know really good rock band. But there's a yeah I listen to ninety five five. That's kind of the newish rock and roll up here in Traverse City. Okay. And yeah. uh, you know KLT, I listen to them. That's classic rock. So I you know I listen to it all. I, I zip around when there's a commercial. You can bet I'm hitting a preset station. Okay. So while you're doing that, you're jamming along, rocking out. Right. Uh, you're driving along. What's your go to snack that you got to have in the vehicle with you? I got to have Nutty Buddies. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Lee makes these nutty buddies. They're the best on the boat, in the truck, ever. Yeah, that and a Diet Mountain Dew, man, I'm happy. All right. Nice. Okay, so you've invited Mike and Dan up to your place up there, and you're going to cook us a meal. Yeah. What outdoor meal would you say, hey, guys, you got to have this? You got to sit down with me, and I'm going to make this for you. What would be that meal? I would make you the soy teriyaki grilled salmon. And I would have a side of uh, fried potatoes and onions and a side of my wife's homemade coleslaw. And we would top that off with a very thick IPA. <laughs> and you guys would want to go to bed early. And the reason we do right. this at the end of the show is because I'm going to eat right after this now. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and, and can you invite... Dawn Renshaw over because she said in the comments that uh, she made peach snaps. Oh, and she canned some peaches too. Oh, excellent! Right, so you yes. throw that in. Uh, and 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 our last question we like. Well, you know, you know what's oh, funny is Rick brought over his uh, smoked salmon. He smoked a bunch up, and uh, it was very good, very good. So I know, I know, if Dawn's cooking over there, they got the gourmet kitchen going on for sure. Right. Oh boy. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, tidbits of, of don't ask you to sing and don't break out the guitar. So, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. So, yeah, you uh, don't do that. That's after the IPAs. <laughs> right? Yeah, so, we'll, we'll, need a, we'll need a sixer of IPAs for that. Yeah. Uh, last question we like to ask is, um, so we've had this fabulous meal. We, we're having a nice thick IPA around the fire. There's a story you're going to say, uh, Mike and Dan, I got to tell you the story because it resonates within me that you got to hear it. And whether it happened an hour ago or a few years back or many years back, what would be that go to story that we need to hear? Well, you know, it's club related. And I'll tell you, it just pops into mind because I think it was probably the most miserable I've ever been fishing. And it was one of those, uh, we did a veterans event on Silver Lake in the middle of a blizzard. The weather couldn't have been worse. And, you know, I'm one of the organizers, uh, logistics guys. I'm setting up, you know, fishing shanties and drilling holes. And it, it was like a 40-mile-an-hour wind, and the vets all had fun. That's it was cool. a great time. We huddled in tents. We had lunch out there. Um, you know, it just pops into mind is, man, can we make a bad situation good? And, and that's what we did. And that's what we do as a club. We make every situation better. I don't think there's ever been an event that's just flopped. It's, uh, I, I think it's just something that everybody wants to happen, and they want people to do it. And, man, I'll tell you what, we'd appreciate new members, you know, new blood. That's Our awesome. volunteers, they run thick, but they get tired quick. So we need new people. And it's that kind of event. And then the, the ones where it's a beautiful summer night like Leland, 10th of May, warm, flat, calm, sun going down, huge lake trout being caught. I think there was like two 20-pounders caught that. Wow. Wow. I mean, it, you know, just that kind of stuff that's fresh in my memory bank, and I'm going, we got it really good. 
you know, these are really the halcyon days of fishing. It, it's just been that good. And all the people that I've met through the club, all the friends that I go fishing with and invite new people on the boat and, you know, just, I, I could go on and on. A campfire to me is really just, man, it's a stage and I'm going to tell you stories until you can't take any more. <laughs> You know? Exactly. That's that. That's yep. right. Uh, yep. It was a brutal day, John says. So totally agree with you. But uh, yes. you no, know, no. <laughs> we'd love to get more people your way. Don't feel free to to reach out, share the show, get the word out about all these items that you guys do as a club, and also this uh, little bit of a sore subject with uh, uh, going on in the state, and also a, well, a, congr- a thank you to you for your service. Absolutely, for sure. And what you do for the veterans as well. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. Not a problem, man. We, we, stay in, in touch with us. And if it, anything changes on this Gilnet uh, issue, please let us know. And uh, we'll get you back on the show, too. So I, I sure will. Uh, hang Appreciate with it. us. Well, we, we're we going to wrap up the show, but hang on with us. And when we finish here, we'll chat real quick and let you go. But uh, All right, we'll do. Uh, for anybody who's listening on the podcast, if you're listening on iTunes, make sure you go over and give us a review. That helps the people who support us. And if you're watching here on Facebook, give us a like, follow, share. Do the sh- same for the Northwest Michigan Fishing Club on their Facebook or in social media pages. Give them a like, follow, share as well. Go over to their website, check it out, hit that uh, membership button, and send them 20 bucks. You won't you won't regret it. And right. get involved as well. So, you know th- that that's the whole thing. It, it takes volunteers. It takes a little bit of money and 20 bucks or a dollar 67 a month as we like to to add that up and see what it does um yeah it's not much at all to get up there and if you're ever up in the area stop by up there check them out find out if they're doing anything that weekend or having a wednesday tournament and then you too can join them up there as well all right that's going to do it for us this week next week uh anything lined up yet yeah we're working on it um he's working on it (laughs) i made a connection tonight and uh hopefully we'll be going up to Mayo, michigan next week we'll just leave it right there at that right exactly but come over to my screen a big shout out and a thank you to mr kevin craven uh he's a celebrity in his own in own right he likes to you know we like to take our picture with him and that was a good day that was a good day and and we've been friends for a very long time but a big thank you to him for reaching out to me to get us in touch with tim and learn more about all that club that has to do there you go all right folks that's going to do it for us this week we'll be back again if danny gets somebody lined up we'll be back again next wednesday night at 7 30 same time y'all take care be safe out there this episode was brought to you by Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Call, The Island Armory, Hacker Max, Sunrise Archery, and C3 Better the Hunt Technology. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.